Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to day two of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside Rob Streche. Hey. Hello. Nice to see you again. The last time we were at an HPE show, we were in Barcelona. Yeah, we were. It was, it was fantastic, and I'm glad to be here again with you. I've been sequestered off in the analyst room for the last two days, and it's great to get out and talk with some people uh, you know, that are really making these products and making the customers happy. Well, speaking of that, let's introduce our next yeah. two guests. We have Tony Koinov, he is the SVP GM HPE GreenLake Platforms at HPE. Welcome, Tony. Well, thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here at theCUBE for the first time. The first so time. Forward to this conversation. Yes, exactly. And we have uh, Latha Vishnabolta, she is the Chief Platinum Officer at HPE. Welcome making a triumphant return to theCUBE, Lana. <laughs> thank, so, thank you, thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> so Tony, I want to start with you because you're a veteran of this industry. You've worked at Netflix, GoDaddy, Adobe, some, some really impressive brand names there. You've been with HPE since October. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you bring to the table at HPE. And, and also, what, what, what attracted you about the opportunity here? Yeah, it's an excellent question. I joined HPE about uh, half a year ago. And as you said, uh, before that, for the last 20 years I uh, was in the high-tech industry, predominantly in the San Francisco, uh, Silicon Valley area. Had the opportunity to lead a lot of uh, very large-scale services, platforms, as well as uh, very high traffic web and mobile applications over those years. Um, as you said, I've had the opportunity to experience some of the transformational times at uh, Google, YouTube, Netflix, but right before joining HP, I was at Adobe leading multi-cloud initiatives, had a lot of experience over those years of moving workloads from the data center to the cloud, between clouds, building multi-cloud, as well as building data centers to actually take some of the workloads to the edge for various business uh, and, and customer satisfaction reasons, so I'll be happy to talk about those more in the future. So I think, again, as you brought that, how does that really tie into the vision that you're bringing as well? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question. I, the reason I joined HP now, because it's a transformational mo moment in the industry, as I said, I experienced myself firsthand actually needing to build hybrid cloud environments rather than just uh, pure cloud environments. And the realization that in the industry is today that uh, hybrid is here with us to stay. And this is a pivotal moment which HP has predicted five years ago and has been building on, on this trajectory for a while. And it has a differentiated offering through HP GreenLake. So it, it was natural for me to join and really be part of this uh, journey and both help HP but also bring my knowledge and experience to our customers. Latha, I'm going to bring you into this conversation as Chief Platform Officer. Uh, you've been on theCUBE before talking about uh, platform innovations. I'd love you to give us an update of what you're hearing from customers in terms of, in terms of how they're adopting these platforms and how they've, they've, been, they've impacted their businesses. Yeah, you know, if you look at uh, the HPE uh, GreenLake Cloud, it's a cloud that comes to you. Right, and, and this cloud offers a variety of um, capabilities for customers to run their traditional cloud native, AI native workloads. So uh, this, is, this is what we have been building and um, if you look at the platform from get go, we kept hybrid cloud in, uh, in mind and we kept building a lot of features for solving hybrid cloud needs or the challenges that the customers are facing. So in, in terms of what we have offered to our customers, variety of services, we offered uh, services in networking, storage, compute, and we also brought in the ops ramp capability. Last year when I was here, we were talking about ops ramp acquisition. Now we actually integrated that onto the platform for hybrid uh, multi-cloud, multi-vendor observability. We also added sustainability insight center and uh, consumption analytics. There's a whole bunch of features that we have added onto the platform. If you look from a persona point of view, again, we uh, not only service the network, server, and storage admins, but we also service uh, other persona, like IT ops, FinOps, DevOps, uh, GreenOps. GreenOps is real these days, right? <laughs> because they are all worried about 
all the AI workloads and how much power they are going to consume in the data centers. So variety of personas that we serve on the platform. And if you look at the statistics, uh, we have four million connected devices on the platform. I'm not even talking about the secondary devices, that will be like hundreds of millions, and if you count even the virtual machines and so on. So, uh, four million devices, 34,000 customers, and we have more than 1,200 channel partners and managed service providers. Believe it or not, the MSPs love the platform because this is one product they need to learn and they keep on unleashing more services for their customers, right? I couldn't be proud, more, more proud about what we have achieved in a short time and how we are able to serve our customers and partners. Um, I'm very, very happy about it. And look at all the announcements, right? Uh, the HPE private cloud AI for AI workloads to do the inferencing or model tuning or RAG, that's, uh, you know, that's more exciting. I, th I think you will see a lot more customers saying, yes, we are on the right track with the platform in a short time. Yeah, I, I think to me that makes so much sense because of what we're seeing and the research that we actually do is that 50% of new net new cloud native apps are actually being deployed on-premise on or in Colo, and it was a nice announcement with uh, WWT and the Equinix and the public cloud uh, AI that's being rolled out and stuff like that. But Tony, help us understand, because it, it's not just about AI, mm -hmm. it is about some of these traditional workloads, it's about the cloud native workloads and the AI workloads that really GreenLake Cloud is assisting customers get a handle on. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you look at that? How do you talk to that? Well, even as I mentioned from my own experience, since the cloud adoption has started, the reality is that the businesses, the enterprises have struggled uh, for gaining the uh, cloud economics across the complete suite of their workloads, having to run those workloads in different environments, multiple uh, clouds, multiple platforms, as well as uh, the, having the need to run them at the edge, on-prem, for various uh, business and uh, customer needs. Uh, in this process, what we have built is we have built from the ground up a platform first cloud experience for them so that we're providing a single cloud for their multi-vendor, multi-cloud estate, which, which is a, a platform that brings, a single platform that bring, brings common uh, data, common services, common practices across all of their uh, infrastructure as well as workloads and enables them through this process to significantly sim simplify their operations, increase their agility, and of course have full control of, which is extremely important with AI nowadays as well, full control of their data and as well as of their environment through a single control plane. Latha, I want to come back to you. Uh, Fidel, Fidel Maruso was up on the main stage and she said, customers worry about the what and the, and, the, and the why, and it's our job to worry about the how. And she wasn't necessarily talking, it wasn't necessarily in the context of platforms, but it could have been. I mean, it, it's, it's about HPE bringing the expertise. Can you talk a little bit about how these advancements are truly benefiting customers in terms of their day-to-day -day operations? Yes, uh, you know, you touched upon an important word there, operations. Uh, you know, when I talk to many of these customers, the day zero, day one aspects are one one set of problems that they need to worry about, but it's the day two operations is where they're really, really concerned, right? Whenever they are uh, buying any equipment from different vendors. So what we have on the platform uh, with the ops ramp capability, for example, for the hybrid multi-cloud, uh, multi-vendor operations, or sustainability, or FinOps, all of these capabilities on the platform really help them to um, operate their infrastructure and services that they are consuming from us, right? And, and there is also another thing that Tony touched upon, which is the platform foundational services. You know, what we have kept in mind as we were building the platform is to provide that consistent end-to-end -end experience. No matter which service you use on the platform, you get a consistent end-to-end -end experience. Day zero, day one, day two, right? And, and that actually reduces the operational burden, believe it or not. And just to give you one example, look at the APIs. You know, the, the customers or managed service providers, they need to learn the APIs once, 
and they can keep using it for different products and do the automation. You know, automation is key, obviously, from an operations point of view. This is how we are making life easy for the customers to uh, use the services from the platform. Yeah, and I, I think, again, it was, throughout all of the announcements. I mean, gr the GreenLake cloud is, is absolutely just, uh, it seems like a foundational part of everything that is being done, no matter where it is. I mean, yes. again, with some of the demos uh, that were done today and things of that nature about how, how it's simple to go from bare metal to, you know, KVM or you know virtual machines and how you then get to Kubernetes and to containers all the way through, hey, click and then you get AI on yeah. top of that. Help us unpack some of the innovations and how you really see this and, and again, kind of from that customer perspective of the use cases that it's solving for them as well. Because like you, I, I love the day two thing because yeah. I think that to me is, you know, great, I set it up, I get it running, now it's day one, and okay, nothing's went bump in the night, but getting to that day two. Yeah, so, so if you look at the innovation, so let's start from the private cloud AI. We talked about it throughout uh, you know, all of the sessions at Discover. Um, not only we are offering the AI solutions to our customers, but we are also embracing AI within the platform. So we have something called Gen, Gen AI based search capabilities on the platform. I talked, I talked about a lot of different users on the platform. So how they can use the Gen AI search to get to what they want very quickly. So making life simple, again, from a day zero, day one, day two point of view. So that's one uh, additional capability we added into the platform, apart from the private cloud AI, which you heard a lot. Uh, then when we talk about the infrastructure that gets deployed, we have something called wellness dashboard, or wellness events are recorded for all of the HPE infrastructure and we give recommendations if we need to fix some of those things, uh, remediation aspects or tips to the customers, and if there is any failure or anything that we are observing, the software immediately goes and creates a support ticket with HPE support. So that kind of reduces the customer um, you know, downtime issues and ability to go and repair things quickly, so that's another innovation. And we already talked about sustainability insight center. You know, uh, everybody wants to have a baseline understanding of the power consumption and carbon emission footprint. Because tomorrow when they run the AI workloads, it's only going to go increase eight to 10 times more. So SIC, we call it, on the platform provides that insight so they can place the workloads based on the information. Is it better to do it in New York or is it in London? Where do I place these workloads, you see? So from a customer point of view, we give that information and they can achieve their sustainability goals as well. So there's, there's a whole bunch of new features and one thing I want to also touch upon is the GreenLake Cloud for the disconnected or a secure uh, environments. I think Fidelma also touched upon that in her uh, keynote today. So that's another advancement we did on the platform. Yeah, and, and maybe just to summarize, right, because yep. uh, a lot of correctly described some of the latest innovation that we have. The key important fact is that we're continuing to very heavily invest into the platform to grow it in depth, breadth, bringing new services, and throughout this process, we're continuously making sure that everything that we build on the platform runs no matter who the vendor is or where those workloads are, giving full control to our customers to build and, and run their environments in the best way that benefits their business. That's the that's really important uh, philosophy for us for being uh, an innovator in, in the hybrid space. Well, I have a question about innovation because <laughs> both of you have led successful technology teams within different organizations. I talked about where you've been, uh, Tony, GoDaddy, and Adobe, and you've been at Cisco and also Palo Alto Networks. I'm interested to hear in the strategies that you use to foster innovation and drive continuous improvement, um, and then, and then what, you're do, what you're doing at HPE to, to do the same. Yeah, so, so innovation comes in, in different uh, ways. One is in what I'll call it embedded innovation, which this is an innovation that happens day, day in and day out uh, throughout the, the process of building the product and gradually, we usually will look two years back and see, oh yes, this was a huge 
incremental process that happens. So we are continuously fostering this level of innovation. We also have these uh, innovation weeks uh, periodically in the, in the team and so on. The other innovation is really driving a more thought out a more planned, forward-looking process of innovation where we define what are the areas, usually expanding the market or sp addressing specific customer needs, and then we decide how do we invest into those uh, directions in a way that we lead progressively into it. Uh, prototyping experiments and potentially bringing new products into the marketplace. So we are pursuing both uh, directions continuously to maximize the output for our customers. Yeah, I think in addition to what uh, Tony mentioned, we also work with our CTO uh, team, you know, the, the, the fellows and technologists who are, who are looking at uh, three to five years horizon, right? We continuously work with them also, uh, apart from doing you know, how we can service the customer requirements and bring, uh, bring some of those ideas to innovate on the platform. And Sustainability Insight Center, in, in fact, is, is one idea that actually uh, stemmed from our, um, you know, one of the, the tech, uh, tech con, if you will, I don't know if you are aware, we have tech con where the innovations are showcased within HPE and uh, we embrace that on the platform. Yeah, in fact, I, I got to uh, talk to some of those folks in, in labs and in tech labs. con and earlier today and I, I think that to me has always been, again, I was at HPE, you know, feels, actually it was over a decade ago now. But when I start to look at it, it, it really is about the innovation and listening to the customers and bringing that back together. Help us understand, because you guys go so broad across HPE, and I think that was you know, the foresight of Fidelma and everything, bringing it together from a hybrid cloud perspective. How do you work across those different groups and how do you keep that innovation going with them and intersecting with them? So, so we have a process through which we coordinate with our partners. Partner groups be, usually be used within uh, HP, but it could be also external partners to take on new initiatives. As I said, we are looking at what are the adjacent opportunities to what we have currently in the marketplace, what are the new, uh, no, very novel ideas that uh, we can pursue together, and we're building a plan and execute through incremental uh, prototyping, putting it into the marketplace, running experiments, uh, seeing how the, what the result is. The <clears throat> Sustainability Insight Center is a very, a very good example which evolved through this process, right? There was an idea, this sustainability obviously is a very, very, very big topic. Antonio Neri mentioned it in uh, his uh, keynote even uh, a day ago. This is, it's very core principle for us and as, uh, as Lata mentioned, the. AI is a very power hungry also application that is becoming a, a, an even more important aspect. But the Sustainability Insight Center was built from the ground up through bringing the idea forward, building a prototype, experimenting with the users, incrementally building feature by feature until we are now announcing that we are providing a very comprehensive coverage of uh, carbon and uh, power usage and enabling the enterprises to achieve, to measure and achieve their sustainability goals. Excellent, well Tony and Lassa, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, and Tony, you're a CUBE alum now, so yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. I stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.